Hello everyone, Dave from Gas Angel here. Today we're going to be talking about boiler servicing. First thing I'm going to cover is why should you get a boiler service? The first reason is if your boiler is under warranty, it is a requirement, you have to get it done. And um, if you don't, then your boiler warranty becomes invalid. The second and probably most frequent one that we'll get uh, calls for is just peace of mind, general peace of mind. You've got a family, uh, you want to make sure they're safe, you want to make sure you're safe, and you want to make sure that the boiler is going to operate as it should so you're getting your heating you're getting your hot water and everything's working like you want okay so we're going to move on to the actual boiler service now first thing we need to do is turn the power off so we'll isolate the fuse spur and we'll remove the fuse if you just isolate it and don't remove the fuse obviously you can quite accidentally just knock that back on and then it's alive again turn the fuse off and remove the actual fuse next thing we're going to do is undo the two screws underneath to take the case off this boiler is uh, extremely common, it's an ideal logic, found in new builds all over the world. The logic Combi SP35, so we're going to take the front cover off, comes off as easy as that. We're now going to drop the control box down. First thing I'm going to do is just do a visual check, just a general check over, no leaks, no corrosion, nothing obviously wrong with it. As this is only 18 months old, it's completely fine. Now we need to access that heat exchanger. Make sure there's no debris there, clean it all out, and we're going to go through that now. So step one, we'll take the sump cover off, just two screws. I would just add, this isn't a how-to video, it is simply just showing you what a boiler service entails. What you should expect if you were to call us out for a boiler service. So we'll take that off, we'll then remove this sump, which is quite stiff quite often. And that comes out like that. Next, we need to take the fan out. So we're going to remove all the electrical connections. There's one here. I'll not bore you to death of what every one of these does, but just disconnect them. We'll then disconnect the generator. This one doesn't want to come out. And take that out there. Next, we're going to take the fan out. Just a little screw there, so we'll get our screwdriver. And undo the nut. So just release the fan from the top of the burner. Down somewhere safe because we don't want to lose that. Next, we need to take off the connection to the gas valve. It's just a clip, we just unclip it. Then this comes out as easy as that. And that's your fan. So we'll just put that to one side. We'll inspect that properly in a second. Next, we've got all these screws down here, so we need to remove these. Pull that down there. We're then going to take this one out. Uh, so this is the burner so we're going to inspect the burner what we're looking for is any distortions cracks anything obviously wrong with it as i said earlier this is only 18 months old so we're not expecting to see much but um we're still going to obviously check it and it's totally fine that what we're also going to do before we put this burner back is replace this seal if you remove anything like a burner from a heat exchanger, then always replace the seal. Just good practice. So we'll just put that on there. That just pushes in. Now we're going to clean the heat exchanger. So the first thing we're going to do is put the sump cover back on. And as you can see, it's hard to access this um, heat exchanger. You can't actually get in and clean it from the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour water down the top of it and flush any debris out. It's going to come through into the sump, out into the condensate trap and through the pipe. Once we've done that, we'll actually clean the condensate trap out at the end. Um, so what we need is we need a kettle of water. We've got a warm kettle of water and we're just going to pour that into the heat exchanger. And we'll be able to visually see what's coming through, what debris is in there. And just like actually scrap that, I don't fit. Right, so we've got this old milk bottle. Um, and we're going to pour the water from it, which is warm, into the heat exchanger. And this will just flush out any debris, go through the condensate trap, and like I say, just give it a good clean out. So we'll just pour that in. I'm just looking to see what's coming through. And as expected, it's pretty clean. There's nothing much in there. Just carry on flushing that through. Now, while that's flushing through, I'm going to expect the condensate system. Make sure nothing's leaking, that it's running out okay. 
Now you've probably noticed the color of the traps changed. It was crystal clear before, now it's a bit murky. Yeah, that's just because we've cleaned all that debris out. Once that's done, obviously we've now got all this debris inside the trap. I'm gonna remove that. So we'll remove this elbow. Again, always inspecting it. That's fine. And then remove the trap. It just locks out. So just one turn, comes straight out like that. We're now gonna empty that out. So put the trap back in once that's clean and you're happy. Always gotta leave a little bit of water in before you replace it. So that's got a little bit of water in there. We'll put the elbow back on. And we'll just dry that boiler out. It's a little bit of residue there. So that's back on, that's back on. The trap's back in. And now we need to replace it in reverse. So the first thing is, put this back on. Just lock it through in reverse. Right, so that's the burner back in. Now we're gonna put the fan back in. So first thing we're gonna do is just visually check the fan. Again, you've got a seal on here. As you can see, that's intact, that's fine. It visually looks absolutely fine, no problems there. So we'll put that back in. You'll see that this washer here fits in there. That's just a sealer to the main burner. Right, that's the fan back in. So we'll now connect it all back up electrically. So lock okay. it, yep. We'll put this back in. Right, so that's it all back together now. So the last thing we need to do is do a flue gas analysis. That's just using this machine here and this will tell where common oxide levels and just basically that everything in the boiler is burning as it should be. So just first thing we need to do is put the case back on. Put the power back on, so put the fuse back in. Switch the boiler on. We're just checking that everything's sealed properly, which it is. Now we're going to run the hot water on maximum. So you can see the boiler's fired up, hot water's on, and the flame's away. So now we need to turn on the flue gas and the analyzer, and we need to purge that. So we need to do that in fresh air. That takes about two minutes. So okay, that's the analyzer purged. So now we're going to put it into the test point there, and just analyze the flue gas is leaving the boiler. Just remove the test point. Keep that somewhere safe, definitely that safe. Put the flue gas analyzer in. And as you can see, we're just waiting for the readings to come up here. So we'll give that a couple of minutes and then just take the readings and make sure they're passable. While that's running, we'll just do some other checks. So we're looking at the pressure. That needs to be between one and one and a half, that's fine. The temperatures are okay. There's no obvious leaks from underneath because we've obviously checked inside the boiler, but we haven't checked the pipework underneath and that is fine. We're also gonna check that the flue is sealed inside and outside. It is, and then we'll check the outside. And that's fine as well. And all those readings have passed, so that's great. And we'll put the test pipe back on. Very, very important that this goes back on, otherwise that's potential carbon monoxide coming back into the room. So we'll seal that. Okay, so that's the service done. Uh, I've cleaned the heat exchanger out. We've done more flue gas analysis. We've checked it for leaks, checked it for safety. Everything's working great. We've tested the central heating, we've tested the hot water, and everything's working as it should. So this has got a good pass. Because the boiler's under warranty, we also need to fill in his manual, his installation manual. As I said earlier, if your boiler's under warranty, then you must have it serviced. This is your benchmark, so all the commissioning data. And on the other side is a service history. Every year, that gets filled in. So we're gonna fill that in now, and then he's good to go. If the boiler was to break, Ideal would come out and they'd say, can I check your service history? If it wasn't filled in, they might not fix it. So that's that. Right, thanks for watching the video, everyone. If you do require a service, uh, visit gasangelheating.co.uk. We'll actually have a special offer on at the minute where you will receive a half price boiler service, so 35 pounds for your initial service when you sign up onto our service plan, which is then five, five pound a month thereafter with lots of other added benefits. So please visit the website gasangelheating.co.uk and thanks for watching.